right, all right, all right. Here we go again. I'll take this over. Aluminum tastes like beer. Adrenaline pulls us near. Evo the letter. Reference to Rem. Okay. Do, do, do. Alright, I believe indeed that this is the rewind chapter. So, without further ado, here we go with the show. I believe this should be the last episode, if I'm not mistaken. And as such, this may be the last episode of Phoenix Wright. I may be looking to replace the series with another one, either other games in the trilogy or a uh, different game entirely. I've heard and seen good things about Cyberpunk, so I might want to try that on the show. I know this PC can handle it, and I don't know, it might be cool. As always, if you have a preference in any direction, let me know. I'm always listening to and receptive to feedback. So, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. <clears throat> okay, episode 5, Final Day, Trial Ladder 2. Yesterday was Trial Ladder, so I thought it was last thing. Yes, there are three games total in the series, so the other two games in the series are always an option. Okay. February 25th, 2.21 p.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. District Court, courtroom number 9. <laughs> Melvin. Now then, will the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, please take the stand? Miss Lana Sky, you are the Chief Prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edward, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. You want to hear the truth. Her testimony may be all we have to go off of because... Uh, Gant refused to provide testimony. Apparently he's chief of police, he's able to excuse himself, which made it a little bit tricky to nail last time. So we're going to be relying on Lana to help us. Go ahead and buy bars where he belongs. Of course, the truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. I'm surprised she's not behind bars. <laughs> Two episodes ago we made the case that she was actually the one who murdered Neil Marshall. So yeah, I don't know why she's just standing around the courtroom like she should be in jail. <laughs> now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. The only one that we have. Gant and the fabrication of testimony. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Uh-huh. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Drake, uh, Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with him. <clears throat> hmm, are you sure about this testimony? Yeah, I still don't even think it was entirely necessary for her to move the body. Because Marshall's body was hanging from the samurai sword originally. But, like, I think Lana and maybe Gant. Lana Gant, and I think Emma might have been unconscious at that point. She certainly didn't have memory of it, so I think Lana's testimony was the only one to go off of. 
if she didn't know, then for all anyone knew or could have suspected, Dark was the one who pushed him. You know, like she might not have even needed to get the body. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course, I'm sure. But Lana, if this is true, then that means Chief Gap has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. Yeah, that... Like, we already made the case that you were the one who murdered Marshall, so... Her sacrifice is going to be in vain. Sadly. <laughs> what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Did you read my thought right there? Did she read my mind? Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. As we will. Gant in the fabrication. Uh, Edgeworth's prosecuting ability was like somewhat suspended in the last episode, so I wonder if that will carry over to this episode too. For some reason, he lost the ability to call witnesses, and I don't—I still don't get that. Walk alongside Gant for years. Did you now? How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Scott were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good coming from the same school as me. Damon Gant was a respectable detective. That's fine. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. Well, think about it, Miss Guy. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Ryan? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. Yeah, she turns her back to everybody just the exact same way that like Gant plays with his hair like the of course like we can't understand what you're saying because you're talking to yourself in the corner you gotta turn around and dress your crowd that's how projection works vocal projection <clears throat> that's like presenting 101 like if you're like have your back turned to where you're talking like no one's gonna be able to hear you any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. <clears throat> I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. Um, yeah, it kinda is. That's your entire reason for fabricating evidence. She was traumatized that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Mono. So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? Seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor ward knife was stuck in the victim's body. Now, yeah, now you're telling us. What? The prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. Yeah, so I guess Lana took him off of that, moved him over near her desk, pulled apart his trophy, and then stabbed him in the back with the knife from the trophy. I, I assume that's what happened based on what she's saying. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. It was you. Or was it dark? Vance says all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change the statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. Uh, okay, what do you mean something like that? 
It either it is or it isn't. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, I was lying on the way on the floor a little distance away. She was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. It's like, yeah, she's like a psychic link with me. She can like read my thoughts. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. But... Okay, so... Like, she just explained that... The prosecutor's award knife was the one hanging out of his back, so... Did she stab him in the back with that, too? You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You all people should know it. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. Again, like, mo moving the body and doing all this, like... Completely unnecessary, in my opinion. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of others. Why'd you plant the knife? Why'd you move the body? I don't know, both good questions. Let me start with this one. Why'd you do that? Come now, Mr. Wright. Even you should be able to figure it out. Very well. Let's add this to the witness's testimony. The reason this guy fabricated the knife. I knew the tip of the weapon found buried in his body would be all the proof we needed. <laughs> According to your testimony, Prosecutor Marshall's broken knife was the murder weapon, right? Yeah, exactly. So why... Yes, and leaving it that... Wait. Leaving it at that might point the blame away from Dark. I felt the most effective way to get him convicted would be by having the tip of his knife found inside of his body. So, again, like, what became of that prosecutor award knife in that trial? Like, it seems like that trial wasn't conducted properly at all. So you, like, the, like no one knows what happened. You buried it inside the victim's stab wound? Yes. Because I hated Dark for what he did. So, who stabbed Marshall with the reward? Guess we can only assume it was dark, I guess. But how did that all come about? Like, Emma said she pushed him, what became of that? So many questions and so few answers. Hmm. My only motivation was to get dark convicted, it had nothing to do with that. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you this right? Emma didn't do it, period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying. She did so she wouldn't be blamed for what happened. Uh, so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying. Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insisted. She fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I gotta get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Worked alongside Gant for years. Then we start again, so I must need to object now.
single stab wound piercing the heart and lung. Weapon found in wound was missing at tip. Did, so did she... No, no I'm confused. <laughs> did she stab him where he fell on the... On the spear? Is, is that what happened, or...? No clue. Here's a small tag in the knife. It says SL92. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not sure. But it reminds me of a similar code, DL6. Maybe it's a case number. That's weird. What? I don't remember where, but I think I've seen something like this before. Something similar to what's written on this tag. It wasn't that long ago either. Maybe I should check the court record again. Yeah, it's the gloves, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is SL911. Tag says SL911. I guess this is another piece of evidence from that case. You know, I never did care for the word tag. It's confusing. Huh? What's so confusing about that? Do you know how many other words sound like it? Bag, gag, nag, lag, drag. Zag? Is that a word? Do you challenge me? What, are we playing a word game now? Okay, I... I don't care much for the witty banter, I just need to know if one of these items can contradict what she's saying. I think that's the only other piece of evidence I have with an SL9 tag. There's Goodman's note. 221 SL9. What does 221 mean, though? So what does the autopsy say? He died February 19th, not 221. Hmm. It's hard to make out, but there's a dark red stain here. Hmm, it looks like blood. This piece the chief has is different, though. The blood stains on the other pieces are just spots, but this one's a line. That is odd. I'm surprised they don't have any dialogue referencing the facts. Oh, this thing doesn't have a bottom. That's weird. I wonder which side's up. Better yet, what's the purpose of a bottomless shark? At least it doesn't collect dust inside, right? Like, we... We made the connection with this jar to what Neil said about his murder. Like, he used these... these blood marks to spell out the name of the murderer. Like, that was in... Uh, was it the last episode or the episode before that? I don't know, but either way... Let me try to present this. <laughs> Please let it work. I think I missed. Ay, ay, ay. Alright, alright. Marshall, before he died, was able to spell out Emma's name on that base. So that. should clarify some stuff, right? Okay, where are we now? Is this Gantt the Fabrication, or...? I 
to ask her why she moved it. When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. Okay, I understand but where the game's headed now. Like, She moved away from Chief Gant's desk because she wanted to remove the, the suspicion that Gant had something to do with it. But again, like, Emma, Dark, literally anyone could have pushed him over there while he was wrestling around. In Chief Gant's office, which by the way, like, where was Chief Gant when all this was happening? Like, we still don't know where he was. Like, one minute, Marshall and Gant are questioning Dark, and, and the next minute he's, like, escaped and he's, like, wrestling with Marshall. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, where was Gant when all this was happening? Like, what was he doing when all that was going down in his office, nonetheless? Like, in his office. I, I don't know. I've asked that before, too, and it never got answered. But the bottle was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason this guy moved the bottle. The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar... See, I knew the jar had something to do with it. Pieces of the jar, you mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Drake, uh, Dart, I keep saying Drake, dyslexia minor. In order to show that Dart committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already, of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Marshall was dead, and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. So... We need to clear up the order of events a little bit. So, Marshall... At some point, there uh, is a struggle between Marshall and Dark. Emma remembers this, and she writes it down, I think, two or three days later on a piece of paper in which Marshall is seen attacking Dark with the knife from the prosecutor's ward. So, they're telling me now that yeah, there's a scuffle. Marshall uses the jar to knock out Dark and then Emma pushes him. Is that how it happened? Or yeah, I don't know. A little confusing. In other words, the jar must have been broken during the struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently, the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. So Dark was already unconscious when you pushed him into, when you pushed Marshall into the statue. Is that what you're saying? I have a feeling there's more to it than that, and it's particularly frustrating because Emma cannot remember or and or explain what she saw she's like she's completely forgotten what happened and she's like one of the only witnesses we have about what happened like lana apparently got there after it happened and gantz was who knows where in the bathroom like we don't we don't know there must be a contradiction here somewhere anyway i committed this fabrication completely alone my only motivation was to get Dark convicted. I had nothing to do with Emma. Okay, so now I present the jar, right? Yeah. So I, I know there's the jar. This guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery of the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered. That truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life, 
will have been in vain. Even so, I'm compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. Contradiction in my testimony? You testified, and I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threaten my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. See, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, he must not yet have been broken before he died. So, yeah. He... So he got pushed into the statue... Apparently, as his body is dangling off that spear, he's able to get a jar, write Emma's name in it in blood, and then die. And then Lana comes along, she sees the jar, breaks it, takes his body off, moves it over. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. He couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Order, order. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. You may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we're headed. Uh, she was there. So I think she knows more than either of you do. Like she knows more than Edgeworth and she knows more than Phoenix. Gant is slippery. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Continue. Jar message. Go. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. Trying to hide her sister's involvement, she smashes the jar. That makes sense. It was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Jar and message in blood. Okay, no traces. Hold it. So the jar was already broken. It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You are an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe? You didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces. Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No, if I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. As you did. That helps my case. Why don't you do that for me? It seems you two might make up yet. Anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to risk the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you need? If you really thought Dart killed Prosecutor Marshall, he wouldn't have wiped away the blood. Exactly. What else could I have done in that situation? The whole reason she did it was to hide her sister's involvement. She thought her sister did it. Fine. I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But how could you see with the power out? should have been in pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. 
I never miss anything. I got every last piece. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. Hold it. So you illegally rearranged the crime scene. Yes, I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana, I didn't know. I've treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late, there's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this date will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. I think I finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. This jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? She found the final piece of the jar and she's Gant's safe. Thereby heavily implying that Gant had some level of involvement with this. As to how or why he's able to not provide testimony, I still don't know why that's the case, but okay. In the chief's safe, but how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. What's strange is that she's saying she barely had enough time to move the bodies and then she quickly had to do like a 180. <laughs> now she's explaining like, oh yeah, I had time to like clean up break the vase and like clean all the blood off of all the pieces it's like so, so in reality you were just lying like you had plenty of time to do all this not only that but Gant was also there he might have helped you move the bodies for all we know yes which leaves us with only one explanation on the night prosecutor Marshall was murdered you were not the first one to show up on the scene Chief Gant got there before you she knows. But could the defendant have simply missed a piece? Objection! I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may be. But everyone makes mistakes. Even I know this. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ah, can you believe that? Objection! Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant. At the time, he was looking for Dart downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? Objection! The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? I don't know why he was trying to hide Emma's involvement, unless Lana and he were co-conspirators in this whole cover-up, which I think they were. Well, Your Honor, can you answer that? No. I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But why would you Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? happened afterwards. Discovering the scene, Lana Scott believed her sister Emma killed the victim. The, the obvious question that arises is, if Emma, if Lana got there after Gantz, she wouldn't have known that, right? 
she would have no way of knowing that. Emma was unconscious because she fainted or whatever. Gant was there. Maybe he updated her at the time. Like, hey, I saw this jar, it had your sister's name on it, I broke it. Hit one of the pieces, can you help me clean this up? Kind of thing. Maybe, I don't I, I have no idea. Lana wouldn't have known it from the scene, basically. She would have had to learn that from Gantz. Particularly if Gant destroyed the vase prior to her getting there, because the vase is the only connection that Emma has to the crime. Lana, of course, did not see Emma push Marshall, so she wouldn't know that. She could, you know, guess, assume that's what happened, but she wouldn't know. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Yeah, maybe she, yeah, I mean, who knows. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma, and therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the Chief's puppet. She's biting her bloody hand. No, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the Chief. I, I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that, coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... You're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap? Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Why? Maybe right after all. What do you mean, Wright? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Oh, thanks, Emma. <laughs> this guy, please testify once more. But, if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. So we're saying Gant killed Marshall now, too. Again, we still don't know who killed Goodman. All we know is that Delana didn't do it. So, so who actually killed Goodman? Was it Gant? Did Gant kill both Goodman and Marshall? I'm gonna leave you with that question while people use the bathroom. <laughs> I guess it is possible he killed both of them. Yeah, I doubt Lana did it. I doubt Lana killed anyone. <laughs> I think Gant killed everybody. But I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Okay, that's helpful. I do remember something, after all. But do you remember killing him? That's the question. This guy, if you will. 
there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. The big orange suit wearing Halloween boogeyman is not here. This cross examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Okay. Alright, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Hopefully she's telling the truth this time. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Okay, so when she, when she got there, she she was like that when she found him. And then Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. I, I guess Emma fainted. Because technically no one attacked her. Dark must have already been knocked unconscious by Marshall. And for some reason Emma pushes him into the, the statue. <laughs> for, for some reason. When I saw what happened I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence and linked her to the murder. Again, she would have had to learn that from Gantz. Like seeing Emma unconscious, Joe Dark unconscious, and Marshall against the samurai statue, for all she knew, it could have been Dark that pushed him against that statue. She doesn't know that. The only evidence that there was was that jar. And Gant was already there, Gant already did the piece, so she would have had to have learned that from Gant. And she can't help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable, the body was impaled on the armor's sword. Yes, we've already established that in the last episode. It's somewhat confusing because we're having to try to explain what happened without evidence or testimony. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What, to me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have faith in you. So there is evidence that we don't have in a round of evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, please present send this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check the evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Is it this? Looks like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was. There's a picture here. Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. Yeah, again, even this picture doesn't link Emma to the crime. detective saw the crime scene like this because I contacted criminal affairs only after I had rearranged everything. On this picture inserted in the court record, it's a crime scene photo taken from the case two years ago. Taken. A crime scene photo from the case two years ago taken. I don't think that sentence is arranged properly. I, I don't know. Mr. Wright. He's cut out from his vest. Could that be the cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe? Okay, but again, uh, Lana would have needed some way to know that that was Emma's handprint on his vest. Like maybe she had a fingerprinting kit or something. Let's 
What's this? What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That clock. It had fingerprints on it. Whosoever should have it possessed it in here. Whosoever's fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. Those fingerprints. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Miss Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross examination. As long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin this cross examination. Actually, crime scene. Presser ninja. Yeah, that picture doesn't. Oh, oh. Come now, Archer. Where'd you come from? It's the worst excuse for a trial I've ever seen. She can't. But now you want to make me out as the bad guy, too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. You've already done that. <laughs> it's too late for that. What? You already de declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own legs. Wow, Edgeworth. There he goes again, going super zane. Not sure what. Think I'm worried? Makes it look pretty worried when you're trying to go super zane back there. Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? Evans will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So what's your excuse, right now? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked open your marsh, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, I must sure be made out as the murderer. Cloth, I'm pretty sure. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. If you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Pro Prosecutor Marshall? Yes, Your Honor. I do have further evidence. Alright, the time has finally come to show it to them. Those prints have got to be the Chiefs. Now then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. about this photo is that that cloth has already been removed. It's a piece of other cloth. Yes, it most likely was cut from the victim's vest near his chest. What's this? There's a big handprint on it. Surely it must have been knocked off cloth by whoever shot the victim into the shore. Yes, but you still killed Goodman. Let's not forget that. Fingerprints. Whose fingerprints are those? Are these? I'm sure Raito has checked, haven't you? Well, whose are they? They're Miss Guys. Miss Emma Guys. What? They're mine? So I really did do it. She, I told you, was conclusive. Yeah, you're still wanted for the murder of Goodman, alright? Objection! This was found in your safe. That means it's possible you forged it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember any cloth in my safe. Do you expect me to believe that? Objection! Objection. What? Give it to us, Brett. 
It's okay. You shouldn't have presented that. By presenting that evidence, you tied it in the sky to Neil Marshall's death. Exactly. She's the one who murdered him. We already knew that from the last episode. What this episode should have been about is connecting Gant to Goodman's death. That's what this episode should have been about. Because we technically we already knew she did it from last episode. And there was no revelation here. Right? It appears we have our killer. This is not the trial for the SL9 incident. The trial was already decided. This is the trial to determine who is guilty for the murder of Detective Goodman. That's why that's what I don't get about this game. It's like why am I solving two different cases at the same time? What the heck? It appears we have our killer. No. No. <laughs> Everything hinges on that. In the end, Lana alone was found guilty on all counts. Did I mess up? I had to say, cannot. Cannot show evidence. I'm gonna call baloney. I'm gonna call baloney on it. I don't care. Be baloney. I left the city you you be It's a great song. I just can't remember which one right now. You used to call me on the cell phone. Okay, why'd you move it? The judge said if we had evidence that we had to present it. So again, like, how is that a disqualification? The pieces of something. Oh, dang it. I wasn't impressed. I have to object here. Through all this, like, well, again, why am I solving two different cases at once? I don't know. Okay, we're just gonna have to fast forward through this part of the episode.
here we go. One, two, three, four. It's the jar, jar, jar. What really stinks is that we didn't have like what's it, whatever it's called, like a warrant or whatever, to give us access to Gant's office. Like that's what really stinks. Because we found the pieces in Gant's safe. Which ties him to the cover up. In the case that yeah, exactly. He may not have been guilty of the murder, but in the SL9 incident, he was guilty of fabricating evidence. We know that. Again, the real question is who killed Goodman? That's the real question. Who killed Goodman? That's Goodman. To check. Yeah, I got this correct. Again, the picture does not connect anyone to the crime. I mean, as far as we know, this could suggest Dark did it. Right? Super Saiyan Gantz, huh? You had to go Super Saiyan, didn't you? Actually, let me hit the B button just to be safe, because I don't want to mess this up again. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. How much? Even he knows. You lied. In my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. That's right, why don't you just show them? You found it together. Why should you? Because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Figured out. Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. I'm sorry, that's the judge. It looks like the part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? Well, that means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. 
This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Some pressure. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, right now. No, I can't just let you pin me as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What do you mean you admit to it? Again, you can't testify, so I don't know how you're going to do that. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. Then it occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were the manipulator. You really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister. And when she saw the scene, she would ask for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant my tip in the victim's body and moved the body across the room. I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I had two pieces of evidence. Just before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Again, if he did that, the only way Lana would have of knowing her sister was connected to the crime was through Gant. So we already know they're both guilty of fabricating evidence. Two pieces of evidence, you mean those items in your safe. But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I'm sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wish not to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that part ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make the police chief like I'm not. She the straw fragment? He is the most logical part of Emma's name. Didn't you expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces? Objection! Objection. But you fabricated all the evidence. What is to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar, too? Ho ho ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. Give me that piece of cloth. Come on, Raicho. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yeah, sorry, but if I didn't want to have to do that thing, Chief and all. Like, we all know you were there. Like, the million dollar question everyone's going was, why weren't you helping Marshall? You had all this time to like rearrange the crime scene and la di da and move the bodies around, but for some reason, when they're having a you know a wrestling match in your office, you're nowhere to be found. I find that extremely strange. It's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. You might not have been the murderer, but you sure had a lot of time to advocate all the evidence, didn't you? Miss Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you can present. The, yeah, the game is forcing me to lie. I literally had no option on that, Judge. Foolish move, Righto. Should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. The moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. So now I show it. I'm sorry, baloney. <laughs> yeah. I am sorry, that's such baloney. Yeah, I, I do not understand what the point of that dog and pony show was at all. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out the piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. At last, we finally brought the balance into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. What was the point of all that? Your Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather, there must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. Maybe it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho ho ho. 
Put a shrill on the uptake is ever worthy. What? Think about it. Nigel had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? Even you already know. You know whose fingerprints are on it. Mr. Wright, do you really know? What if his fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer? Whose fingerprints are they? Emmett's. Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. Baloney. The person to whom these fingerprints belong to is... Just make sure it's okay. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, but okay. I'm not in this going. Well, they're mine. I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? How oh, we were already over this in the last episode. You knew all along it was yours. We already had that revelation in the last episode. This was supposed to be the episode to figure out who murdered Goodman. And I do like Gant's theme, like it's a good theme. Ho 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 ho. Was something right there. And it might be one of my favorite themes in the game. You just grumbled to it all along. You should have tried to pin the murder on me. No one was trying to pin Marshall's murder on you. You were involved in the cover up. But you didn't murder Marshall. The real person you murdered was Goodman. That's what this case should have been about. Trying to tie you to the murder of Goodman. So it's true, tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Foster in Foster King's bed. How could you? You, you monster. You scarred. You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you, you acted like she really didn't. This guy, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ah, but I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposefully, purposefully concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. I'll have your badge, boy. I have your badge for What's the matter, Cat Dr. Tom? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer. Yeah, I'm not the one who turned her into a murderer, she already was. Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. I don't watch that. Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? Again. We already know that. We need to discover who really killed Detective Goodman. What? She can't. You're absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Scott, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. Watch a contradiction? Watch this full bobbling bunch. I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. Just do what? This piece of cloth. What could it possibly contradict? She can't, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, a piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. What? 
picture check leads to this picture for you. This is the picture Miss Guy took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. It's only natural when someone's murdered. <laughs> his lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Hold oh, like that piece of cloth. Has no blood on it. Uh, okay. There's no blood on it. So what does that mean? Emma pushed him. Like, how did Graham Crane get on that? I, I don't know. Uh, since Emma's guy's fingerprints are on this cloth, there is no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, that's just nonsense. Now then, Chief Gan, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky? Picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword. Then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. To make Lana believe her sister did it. Again, he had all this time. You had all that time and yet you couldn't help Marshall. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? That the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> Super Saiyan. It's finally all over. We still don't know who killed Detective Good. That's all well and good. <laughs> oh, I was close right there. You almost had me. Sorry. I still have to do better than that. There are future allegations. What do you mean you repeat his allegations? Is she that piece of cloth? Is she illegal evidence? Order, order. What nonsense is this? Legal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, I do. Earlier, all right over here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse right now? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Right. I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Again, the game forces me to lie. I have no control over that. That's true. Defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, he should have cloth. She should be legal evidence. But that's not there. Ho ho ho! Did you actually think you could rush me in court? Looks like the last house on you, son. I'm straight out of Halloween line, you can't beat me. I'm ready for Halloween all year long. I'll have Halloween on Christmas. I'm afraid Mr. Gunn's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgewood. True. The legal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Well, Mr. Wright. Don't look at me. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposely and illegally concealed this piece of cloth. I admit, I refused to present it at one point. Ah, so the evidence is illegal. Objection! Objection. No, it isn't, Mr. Jones. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence, though. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? 
there are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Edgy, don't listen to the to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. Objection! There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all. From here you refuse to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence log. Watch this. Watch this. I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Scott's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of Evans Law. Rule number one. All evidence shall be shown without the prior approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the clock and the SL9 incident. Watch, what kind of nonsense is this? What relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Objection! Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value's evidence was you, David Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of victim zest. Oh yes. No. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this one. La 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 la. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before the prosecutor marshal in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant. The killer was you. No. Hmm. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Oh. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Are you done? Maybe I should have gotten rid of it. When I had the chance. Good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. The evidence isn't transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you gotta help me. We haven't heard from him in a while, actually. Goodman turned him down, as she ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodwin's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodwin came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. That's when I murdered him. And all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodwin? Can you please, can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? You can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. Is that when you killed him? Cold blood? She opened Shepard's locker, and as she was talking, taking out the evidence, she said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to the marshal. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring a batch all night. That's when I saw it. That cursed knife. I 
didn't just pull a pouch. Doing so would have only led to more blood making it clear, making near impossible to hide your crime. Didn't show the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprints. And Detective Gumshoe Walker. They should be known as the crime computer. Everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no patience doing any of this. So you murdered everybody. You maniac. Can you put the body in my car? I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. Look your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives are required. You're the chief police though, you're not a detective. Grr. Leaving the prosecution's car aside. How? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did, the proof came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Gibbons' locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I sure didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments and the gloves. Yeah. Looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. So you left like just a plethora of evidence. I'll do their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, were they? Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. One day you will understand. Don't believe me, you will. You're just one man. I sure I'm not a murderer. Yeah, even the turnabout goodbyes. Uh, let's see, who actually did it? The uh, old man did it. Yeah, so Edgeworth's not a murderer. I don't see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Like it's time to say goodbye. Don't mind you. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I better date with the big house. I'm sorry too, Dan. Yes. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator, an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you're no longer that person. Those dates are gone now, aren't you? Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have right up here. And worth it. These two around? Can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The pipes, the pipes are falling. To take me off to jail. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never heard anything. Second, Danny Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Scott, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years, from the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Guy, I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, this might make it to the top. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Scott. Miss Scott. And to you too, Mr. Edward. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much an ordeal has been for you. Was nothing. Liar. I was afraid the pressure might break you, and yet, you rose above it all and guided this right to victory. You done well, Mr. Edward. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems as good self examination for the problems. Miss Scott. Yes, Your Honor. You're innocent of murder, however, 
Although the chief lacked an injury, the fact is you still act best as Pumbus. Trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. She seems pretty chipper about that. Is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smarter? Yeah, exactly, like, fabricating evidence is no small matter. <laughs> You'll probably get jail time. It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Like, you might actually go to prison for that. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Yeah, no kidding, this is the longest episode yet. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant was not in the sky. Not guilty. Woohoo, about time. That is all. The court is adjourned. February 25th, 503 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby No. 2. Long last, it's finally over. Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended, I can see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Miss Wright. And to you too, Miss Redford. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best too, but Mona didn't say a single word to me. Probably because you did, like, absolutely nothing. Like, you provided, like... I mean, you did help us in the investigation, that's true. But, like, your testimony was not that helpful. Like, you forgot... You basically forgot everything, and not only that, you lost consciousness, so... Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. Come back later. You can just hang out in the office, don't you? Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making the detective run around while on duty. Top it off, you call me here so you can have your people at funerals. Lighten up, pals. Only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. Yeah, they did because of me, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Mama. Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. I'll tell you that. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago. Was the first time in my life I have ever failed. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis, ask again to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now I realize I was wrong. It changed after that, Dad. I had to. This is the only way I can make it through these past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you're only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. You're hiding what I believed to be the truth. I was deceiving you. Sis, I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm sorry. Sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. Now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. Yeah, you're gonna get jail time. Fabricating evidence in not one but two tries. Nothing can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in so doing, we can find a way back to our rightful path. And it's from there we can move on toward a brighter future.
least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Ready? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop honey and come over here. Where was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't get don't blame yourself for what happens. You were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals, I feel it. You and me were the same. One day you will understand, or believe me, you will have wished one man. But see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to do it alone. Yeah, you guys are not the same at all. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. In order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant could. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Jimmy Gant, your mentor, Manfred von Karma. They're both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. They both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. Yet, Phoenix, you were working together with Mr. Wright. Because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Uh, what? Oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. That's the picture right here. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half the evidence list, and I had the other. Part we wouldn't have been able to completely restore on this picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth, if you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Whatever you do, just remember. You can let what happened to the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know, it seems I owe you my thanks too, right? What I face now, it's my problem. Edward, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. You look like you're straight out of the 1800s. I'd better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. Seems you both have a lot to learn, catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation. First book I ever bought, I still get that. Thanks, sis. I will. And so another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. Even though, uh, Lana's going to have to do some hard time for fabricating evidence, but after that, everything should be good. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Hello? Don't go trucking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. See, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But, I thought you said it was okay. 
That would maybe okay with me, but the folks in the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard and sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? There you go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, haha. <laughs> Let's see. This guy here is the one who would be footing the bill. Huh? Why, you think I can afford it with my salary? You have to kid me, pal. Huh? Oh, huh? Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it I suddenly feel like I want to scream? I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Objection! Objection. Great game. Whew, what a finale. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then I'll be able to investigate crimes together with them. <laughs> yeah, maybe we eventually get out. Thanks, thought I was going for, for a moment there, in the end, though. You have to look my unauthorized investigation at the chief's office. If I penalize you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. If that's what they said. This goes to show. You can't shake me out that easy. Are they going to give us, like, the... What they're, where they are now stories of all the characters? Where you like what? Edgeworth, Grossberg, <laughs> maybe the Fay sisters. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm going to make a detective. Yes, sir. Then I can be just like that Dick Gumshoe. His hand still messed up. Now we need to hear from Edgeworth, uh, the Marshall guy, Jack Marshall, or his name is Jake, Jake or Jack. I don't know. I forget. I think what I enjoy the most about this game are the characters. Great characters, great music. And I really do like the puzzle solving aspect of the game. There he is. What is it? Can't you see I'm having to make a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss yeah, Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seen one of the guards, it seems. Okay, well, boy, looks like you did it. He even gave Bambina back for a smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? Great characters, great songs. There she is again. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout thing. It's a hot cell around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Sometimes, like, the narrative of the trials is very li very linear, but I like the, the action of the trials, especially. I'll never forget. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Mr. Right? Anyway, he said he's been doing something for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, got another trial to go to, so I better be Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Yeah, 
that's like like the what do they call it the acting one like objection <laughs> and yeah just very linear in some cases the narrative that the trial wants to tell uh, there's mine uh, nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air still sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection still I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium mystic Maya afternoon training is about to begin coming see you around Nick it's Phoenix <laughs> Yeah, like, sometimes I'd want to present a piece of evidence, and, like, it was either the wrong piece of evidence, which you'll see in this series, if you check mine out on YouTube, Storm Michelle. And sometimes I would present it at the wrong time. The game has, like, a very specific story it wants to tell, and if you try to color outside the line to get, like, docked points. Mr. Edgel. Uh, Mr. Edgel. I have to remember his voice. I brought your tea. Let's go on. I have no idea what that is, bellboy. Thanks for coming to see me off. Can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. A little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Alright. For when she was a kid. <laughs> Nice, nice. I wonder if we're going to hear from Grossberg. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I guess it's just a continuation now. Alright, what a game, what a game, what a game. Whew, so that should do it for the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me on this uh, enjoyed watching and thank you for joining me on this adventure. Uh, yeah, I mean hard to say what's next. Whether it's the other games in the trilogy, or if this is where the story ends. It was a good time, it was a blast. I really did enjoy Phoenix Wright. And thank you for all the support for the show, whether it's, you know, view, chat, follow on Twitch, sub on YouTube, subscribe, likes everything helps so thank you and of course thank you for watching